I want to thank you for tuning into this broadcast. My hope is that this will be the first of many broadcasts that I'm able to share with you. In future broadcasts, I'm going to talk about current events, things are hap that are happening in this world, because so much is happening right now. Things are moving at, at really lightning speed all over the world. But today I want to talk about with you about something very, very personal. And there's a reason I want to do this. And, and as I do, you may hear some wind in the background. It's very windy here today. But I wanted to be outside today. I wanted to record this outside. Because uh, as I'll share with you, now I see every day as a gift. Every single day that we are given is a gift. And this has become new. It's become real to me. Because as many of you already know, Recently, I came close to death. I almost died. And when I was there, when I was on literally on the brink of going to the other side, when I was uh, almost gone, I was confronted with a reality. All of a sudden, I, I understood and I was confronted. What I was confronted with absolutely horrified me. And I'll explain. It's not what you think. But I'll explain, I'll explain why I was horrified in that moment. And it's really changed me, it's changed my life. I hope that it will, ins what I went through, what I uh, experienced will in inspire you, whether you're a believer, whether you're not a believer. Um, I believe that this is going to be one of the most important videos that you've seen in a long time, not because it's about me, but because of what I'm going to talk about. And what I'm going to talk about today is death. You know, it's a, it's a reality that we don't like to think about. It's a reality that our society trains us not to think about. We're not supposed to think about death. But death is very real and death is coming. There's no one in human history that's been able uh, to outrun it uh, except for Jesus Christ, who ultimately rose from the de dead. But death is a reality. But, uh, you know, the, this world, our system, they train us to focus on the here and now, not to think about the future, not to think about what's going to happen after we die, where we're going to go. But these are very important things to think about. And so I want to think about these things today. I want to, I want to share my story with you. And in order to do that, I, I, I really need to go back to the beginning. If they go back a, a number of weeks ago, I, I started getting sick. And that was unusual for me because I'm a very healthy person. Uh, but uh, I, I started getting sick and it was a respiratory illness. And uh, right away I, I, I thought, well, I, I know what this is because I, I recognize some of the systems, symptoms I thought. So I thought it was this illness, this pandemic that's been, been uh, running around for the last several years. So I said, aha, well, I know what to do. We're well prepared. I, I started taking some things. I thought, I, I know exactly what I'm supposed to do. But it didn't work. In fact, I started getting worse. I rapidly started getting worse. And uh, in fact, it got really bad. And I didn't know until much later on when I finally went to the doctor that it, was, it wasn't the, the pandemic, but it was a, a disease called RSV which once upon a time, which was mostly in little children, it's actually the second leading cause of death in children worldwide around the, the world every year. Uh, but now it's become a lot more common in adults, especially older adults. And, but, and so that's what I had, but I didn't realize it at first. So I'm treating it as if it's something else and I'm getting worse and I'm getting worse. And then, and then one day, boom, it just hit me so hard, literally, I, I didn't want to move. Literally, all I could do was just kind of sit around. And the thought of even going halfway across the room was just exhausting to me. I was completely and totally and utterly exhausted. I didn't want to move. I didn't want to go anywhere. I didn't want to do anything. Um, because it's as if all the energy in my entire body was just drained out of me. And so you may think, well, Michael, why don't you just sleep it off? Well, the problem was the RSV was, uh, was attacking me very severely, but especially my throat. Uh, I, it got to a point where I could barely talk, but then my throat was really, really attacked just severely. And so if I would lay down, 
uh, all of a sudden fluid would come just rushing in. Uh, just a tremendous amount of fluid would rush into my throat. And if I laid down, almost instantly I would start choking and gagging all the fluid that would come flooding into my throat. So literally I could not lay down and get any rest. And so that basically made it impossible for me to sleep. And so uh, this went on four or five days. Um, I couldn't, I tried propping myself up with pillows so I could try to lay down and get some rest. That didn't work, the same thing would happen. The only way I could kind of get some rest would be to sit on a sofa. But for the, those first few days, uh, <clears throat> I, I literally couldn't, couldn't sleep. Because if I go to sleep, I, my, my neck would start to tilt. And then, then all of a sudden, you know, I'd get fluid in my throat. I'd start choking and gagging. And just within a few moments, I'd be, I would be rudely brought back to being awake. And uh, so I, I, for, for, for four or five days, I wasn't able to, to sleep at all. Just brief moments before I was rudely brought, brought back by my throat, by the pain, by the, the, the suffering. I was suffering tremendously because of this disease. Uh, so I wasn't getting any sleep. And by the time you've gone through four or five days, I mean, mentally and emotionally, you're just shot. You're just gone. I don't know if you've ever been there where you've been forced to stay awake for four or five days straight. Uh, but it, it's horrible. I never want to go through that again. Trust me. Um, it's it's a, it's a, an it's experience I'll never forget. But every night I would, I'd, I'd be there and I'd be desperately trying to get some sleep by by kind of being propped up on, on the sofa, but, but I initially I couldn't. Now, later on, eventually as I started getting better, uh, I could, uh, if I prop myself up very carefully on the sofa, kind of lean my head back a little bit on a pillow, I, I eventually got to the point where I could start to sleep a couple hours at a time before I would be reawakened, uh, and th at least I could start to get some sleep at that point. But for, for as I said, for four or five days, I didn't really get any sleep at all. So emotionally, mentally, I was shot, I was gone. Um, and during that time, you know, I, I, I totally lost my appetite. I would try to eat and I really, I really, I couldn't eat much at all. I would eat like uh, a, a part of a meal, a quarter of a meal, a half a meal, a couple times a day. And that was it. I just didn't want to eat. I, my body didn't want the food. And so I, 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 I wasn't eating. Hardly at all. Uh, then uh, at the same time, I didn't want to drink much. And uh, even when I would drink, uh, because of my, my throat, uh, it, it, really, it just hurt. It hurt to drink. I didn't like to drink. I didn't, want, I didn't feel thirsty, really. So I didn't drink much, even though you know, I had my water bottle with me like I always do. Uh, I just wasn't drinking much. But at the same time, I'm losing fluid like crazy because RSV, if you get a really bad case, I mean, it just produces an unbelievable amount of mucus. So I'm getting all this mucus. It's just, I'm constantly blowing my nose, constantly mucus just coming out of me. And uh, that, and that's very dehydrating. And uh, then also I'm, I'm breathing with my mouth open just all the time. That's very dehydrating as well. But I'm not, I'm not drinking much water. I'm not drinking, I'm not getting much fluid inside of me. And so this is going on day after day after day. So I'm getting to the point where I'm extremely dehydrated, but I don't even know it. I don't even realize it um, because I haven't been getting any sleep. I'm extremely ill. I'm kind of delirious. I'm, I'm kind of really out of it, to be frank with you. And so I don't even realize what's going on. And so my body just starts shutting down. I'm just, I'm just in, in terrible pain. I'm sick. I'm, I'm feeling just horrible. I know things are getting worse, but whatever I've been taking, it's not working. Uh, in fact, some things I've, I took may have made things even worse. Um, but I'm like, why isn't this working? These things are supposed to work against the pandemic, but they're, they're not working. And so I'm just getting worse and worse and worse. And, uh, and those that have been following me on my, on my Substack newsletter, you know, that they, they, I, you know, I, I, I was updating them and, and letting them know how I was doing in this journey that I was on, but it eventually got to the point where I knew I, I was in big trouble. I knew that, I, I, you know, I, I was extremely, extremely vulnerable 
and that I, I couldn't go on like this much longer. Um, first of all, the human body can only take being without sleep for so long, but then the sickness, this illness was really just devastating me. But then I think the biggest threat of all was that I was severely dehydrated. I didn't even know it. I didn't even realize it, but I was severely dehydrated and, and my body was shutting down. You know, I believe my organs were starting to shut down. And so, you know, I, but I did, what I did realize is that I was in big trouble. I was, I was close to death. And, uh, and, and late one night as I was there and I'm realizing, I'm thinking about this, I'm thinking, wow, this could be it, you know? And, and all these years and in my forties, I thought, man, I feel invulnerable, you know, I'm, I'm strong, but I'm starting to realize I'm not so strong. I'm not so invulnerable. So I'm, I'm at that point and man, and, and, and so I started thinking, well, what happens if I die? And that's not something we like to think about. It's not something I like to think about, but here I am. I'm, I'm, I'm thinking, well, this could be it for me. And in that moment, at that time, I realized, well, if I die, well, I know where I'm going to go. I'm going to go to be with the Lord because I'm a Christian. Uh, Jesus Christ is my Lord and Savior. So I know if I die, I'm, I'm passed away. I'm going to go to the Lord. And so, yeah, that, that was a comfort. But then I also realized, and I was horrified by the thought, if I go to be with the Lord at that moment, I'm going to stand before the Lord and I have not completed my job. I have not done the things that I've been called to do. I've been, I've been putting so many things that I've, I'm supposed to do, that I've wanted to do, that I've meant to do. I put them off. I, I wasn't doing them or I thought I'll do them later. You know, that's what we all of us tend to think. There's so many things we want to do, we intend to do, we plan to do, but we say, well, I'll do them someday. I'll put them off for the future. And a lot of you may be, be you know, watching this and say, well, Michael, you've done a lot of things. And yeah, it's not like I haven't done anything, but I knew if I went and stood before the Lord at that moment, that he knows everything. And, and I, there wouldn't be any excuses. You know, normally if we're caught in something in, in real life, especially as kids, what, what immediately you know, if our parents caught us at something when we were small, well, we'd start making excuses. We'd be like, well, but such and such. Oh, but, you know, what about this? And, and but, you know, standing before the Lord, we can't say, oh, there were mitigating circumstances. Oh, I would have done what I was called to do. Uh, but uh, but uh, this or that or the other thing. There's no excuses with God. And I knew if I stood before God, he would know and I would know that I didn't finish the race, that I didn't do everything that I was called to do. And I was horrified by that. I was like, there's so much I wanted to do, but I didn't get to do it. And so that's one of the reasons I'm talking with you today. That's one of the reasons that I'm doing this broadcast. That's why, one of the reasons why I'm making changes in my life, why I'm going to start doing what I've been called to do. I've got to do it because when I go to the other side, I don't want to hear, well, you didn't do what you were, were, were called to do. I want to hear, well done, good and faithful servant. I want to hear that I finished the race, that I completed the task, that I did a great job, that I did what God put me on this earth to do. And so that's my encouragement to, to you all today. Have you finished the race? Have you completed the job that you're supposed to do? Are you doing those things? Are you in the process of fulfilling your calling, whatever you're called to do? Because we need to be doing those things. I, if you have your Bible, a Bible handy, please turn to uh, Psalm chapter 90. There's a verse I want to share with you. To Psalm chapter 90, verse 10. The years of our life are 70 and if by reason of strength 80, yet their length is toil and sorrow, for they soon end and we fly away. Now the Bible, all the way back when Psalm, the book of Psalms was written, approximately 3,000 years ago, you know, they said, hey, the years of our life are 70, or if we're really strong, about 80. And not that much has changed since then, right? In fact, today I went to Google, I typed in life expectancy in the U.S. And what it told me was that it's currently about 77 years. 
So it's right there in the same range that the psalmist wrote almost 3,000 years ago, approximately 3,000 years ago. And so I thought about that. I thought, wow, you know, and here I am. I'm, I'm in my 50s now. And so that means I'm a, I'm a lot closer to that end point than I am to the beginning. And a lot of you are in the same boat. But then even, you know, it's today we've got so many people dying in their 20s and their 30s. Earlier today there was a news story about the son of Ray Lewis. He was 28 years old. He probably thought he had 50 years still ahead of him, but now he, he's died. He's gone. You know, for so many people, healthy young people in recent years have been dropping dead unexpectedly, all of a sudden. You know, so we don't know. Each, we don't know what day will be our last. We don't know. They're, they're, tomorrow is not guaranteed for any of us. And so that's what I, I, I want you to think about. If you died tonight, are you sure where you would go? Would you go to be with the Lord? If you're not 100% sure, I want you to keep listening because there's some, something very important I want to share with you. If you're a Christian, if you died tonight and stood before the Lord, what would you tell him? Now, don't think you're going to pull the wool over the Lord's eyes or you're, going to, or you're going to be able to make excuses because he knows everything. He knows it all. So what when you're, when, if you stood before the Lord and you're asked to give an account for what you did, for how you lived, what would you say? Did you do the things that you needed to do? Did you love your wife or your husband? Or did you love your family? Did you love those around you? Or were you filled with hate? Did you forgive or were you filled with unforgiveness? And did you do something to make a difference in this world for eternity while you still could? Or did you do nothing? And those are hard questions, but those are the kind of questions I had to face when I was on the, on the brink of death's door. And I'm so glad the Lord brought me back. And so I have a chance here today, I have a chance in this video to talk to you, to share it with you, to preach the gospel, to preach the message that I'm supposed to be preaching because that's what I've got to do. I must do it. I must preach the gospel because that's what I've been called to do. And so if you're watching today, and look, look, you're not watching this video by accident. You're watching this video because God brought you here. He brought you here for a reason because he wants you to hear this message. Because you're not going to hear this on CNN. You're not going to hear this on Fox News. You're not going to hear this on cable television. You're not going to hear this at school or at work. But it's a real. One day you're going to be faced with eternity. In fact, it's going to happen a lot, for a lot of people in this world a lot faster than they thought because we're living in the end times. We're living in the last days. We're, we're going to be the, the, the times that the book of Revelation described. If you read the book of Revelation, you read about death and destruction on a scale that most people can't even imagine. And as the world moves into those times, a lot of people are going to, billions of people are going to die, most of them very suddenly, and their lives are going to be cut far shorter than they ever imagined. And you might be one of them. Or you might die even sooner than that. You may die tonight. Uh, you may die the next time you get in a, a vehicle. As you're traveling on the road, you might die. You might get in an accident and then die just like that. Then what? Then all the things that you've accumulated, your bank account, your 401k, your plans, your programs, your education, everything that you, you plan for your future will be gone. All you will have is what you, you'll stand before God and all that will be matter is your relationship with him and what you've done for eternity. And what will you say then? What will I say then? We've got to wake up. We've got to change. And if you're listening to this and you want to change, maybe you're watching this and you don't know. Let me ask you a question. If you died tonight, where will you go? Will you go to heaven to be with the Lord? Are you 100% sure? The Bible says that everyone's going somewhere. And the Bible said you can know. In 1 John chapter 5, verse 11 to 13, the Bible says, He who has the Son has life. 
But he who does not have the Son does not have life. Do you have eternal life? Do you know that Jesus Christ is living inside of you? Are you sure? If you're not sure, listen to me. You can be sure right now. In Revelation chapter 3, Jesus says, I behold, I stand at the door and knock. You see, God sent his son, the Lord Jesus Christ. In Hebrew, his name is Yeshua HaMashiach. He sent him into the world. He lived a sinless life. He did many m m miracles. He, he, he taught the multitudes. And we have a story. It's in the Bible today. And it's turned the world upside down. But the most important thing that he did is that he died on a wooden cross. He died on a Roman cross. And he paid for your sins and he paid for my sins by dying on the cross. And then he rose again three days later. And he, and he, he paid for all the evil and wicked things that we've ever did. Because we are sinners. We, we, all of us. All of us have violated God's laws. All of us have, uh, have, 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 uh, have, have, have done evil and wicked things. And Jesus took the penalty uh, for us on the cross. And so if we are willing to accept that free gift, if we're willing to say, Lord Jesus, I want you to be my Lord and Savior. Come into my life. Forgive my sins and give me eternal life. He will. He will. And he's done it for countless people all over the world over, uh, for, for thousands of years. And he can do it for you. But you have to make a choice. Because the Bible says in order to come to the Lord Jesus Christ, you must repent. You must turn from your wicked ways. You can't have your sin and have the Lord Jesus Christ. You have to choose one or the other. If you will repent and say, Father, I'm sorry, Lord Jesus, I'm sorry. I repent and I choose you. And I, 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 wanna, I repent and I want you. I choose you. I surrender to you. He will give you eternal life. And then if you're a Christian and maybe you've gotten on the wrong track, you've been living for yourself instead of living for God. You haven't been doing the things that God wants you to do. You haven't been making a difference for eternity. And you, you know, it, it, it doesn't matter what I think anyone else thinks. God knows what your heart, God knows, uh, uh, can see the things that you do in public and in secret. And he knows the thoughts and intentions of your heart. So where is your heart? Are you right with him? Do you need to come back with, to him? Do you need to rededicate your life to him? Do you need to get back on the right track? Well, if you're in that boat too, I'm, I'm going to say a prayer. And if you want to become a Christian, if you want to surrender your life to the Lord Jesus Christ, or if you're already a believer, but if you were to stand before God today, you wouldn't know what to say because you haven't been doing the things that you're supposed to be doing. You haven't been running the race. You haven't been doing the job and, and following the calling you've been supposed to do. Well, I'm going to pray a prayer. And if you want to get back on the right track, if you want to surrender your life to Christ, please pray this prayer with me. Lord Jesus, I need you. Thank you for dying on the cross for my sins. I repent of my sins. I repent of the evil and wicked things that I've done. I repent of the evil and wicked things that I believed. I turn from sin. I reject sin. I choose you. I choose your laws and commandments and statutes. I choose your ways. I will follow you. I surrender to you. I commit my life to you. I give my life to you. Please be my savior. Be my Lord. Take control of my life. Make me the man you want me to be. Please teach me how to walk greatly with you. Please help me to do the things that you've called me to do. I surrender everything to you. And from this day forward, I will live for you. Thank you for being my Lord and Savior, Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you for coming into my life. Thank you for forgiving my sins and giving me eternal life. And I pray all these things today in the name of my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen and amen. If you prayed that prayer today, if you've invited Jesus Christ to be your Lord and Savior, or if you've prayed that prayer and you've recommitted your life, if you've rededicated your life to the Lord Jesus Christ, 
there's something very important that I want you to do. Something very important that you need to do. You need to make a public stand because almost everyone that Jesus called, he called them publicly. And so uh, I'm asking you, tell somebody that you're living with or tell somebody that you know. Or one way you can even do it is in the, in the comment section to this video. Leave a comment and publicly tell everyone that you've decided to follow Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. Or publicly tell everyone that you've decided to recommit, that you're going to follow the, the Lord Jesus Christ and do what He wants you to do from this point forward. That you're going to follow your calling. That you're going to do what He's called you to do. And, and because I, I urge you to do that today. Because time is short. Time is running out for all of us. Like I said, tomorrow's not guaranteed for all of us. And then ultimately, these are the end times. We're living in the, the times that the Bible talked about, the times just before the return of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. So time is going to be limited for all of us. We only have so much time left, and the clock is ticking. So I would encourage you, please, please surrender your life and follow the Lord Jesus Christ today. Now in the future, I'm going to be doing more of these broadcasts. Uh, my voice will get stronger as I, as I get back to normal, as I fully recover my strength. And, uh, and I, 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 I hope that uh, you all will be inspired and will join with me. Because right now, there's approximately 8 billion people I mean, you go back to the year uh, 1900, uh, there were less than a billion people living on this planet. Today, there are approximately 8 billion people living on this planet. So there are more souls hanging in the balance right now than ever before in all of human history. That means there's the greatest potential harvest of souls than ever before in the entire history of humanity. And we get to be here. We get to be at this critical moment in all of human history when the world population is peaking and just before the events of the book of Revelation when billions of them will die very suddenly. And so this is the hour, this is the time when preaching the gospel and winning souls is more important than it's ever been before. And I believe we're going to see the greatest move of God in all of human history. I believe we're going to see the greatest harvest of souls in all of human history. And you may think, I'm not, I'm, I'm not that talented. I'd, I don't have that much going for me. But I'll tell you what, you know, most of the talented people, the people that have it all together, they're not serving God. They're not preaching the gospel. But God takes the foolish things of this world. He takes ordinary people, people like you and people like me, and he, he confounds the wisdom of the wise, and he uses people like us to turn the world upside down. So that I'm, God can use you. God can use me to make a difference. So I would encourage you, make a difference, be on fire, and together we can do this. Together we we can turn this world upside down and prepare the way for the return of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. So thank you again for listening. Thank you again for tuning into this broadcast. And God bless you.